yeah, now it's recording. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, so um, this is a Notwell. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with that, but um, it's part of the procedure that we, we start with that. So if you have any questions, just let us know. Um, and um, let's dive into the current agenda. Here it is. So we have uh, basically three um, uh, papers that are in um, working group last call. Uh, the idea is that we finish uh, with those, um, um, I mean, those, um, those uh, papers, those drafts. And um, so we provide the opportunity during this meeting to close those, uh, or getting closer to closing those uh, uh, working group. Um, I don't know if um, uh, maybe, uh, um, I know that Signem has some uh, time constraints, so I'm just checking if, if she's present here. She doesn't seem to be present, so um, we will call her um, uh, later. Um, now, um, so we, we're going to start, um, uh, I'm not sure that Munir is here, so, um, uh, but uh, let's start with Kohab Ip. Um. Are you ready to present? Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Perfect, thank okay. you. So uh, hello everyone. Uh, this presentation uh, I hope is going to be short. Uh, just uh, introducing introducing some clarifications that uh, there there. Oh sorry, uh, that that is not the cur uh, the the current presentation. Uh, sorry, maybe there is an an issue with the. Material. Okay. The data September fourteenth. Okay, so I'm closing that. Um, so I suppose you're uploading a new presentation. No, Daniel, you have the wrong meeting up. You have oh, September. okay. <laughs> okay. So here it is. Yes, thank you. So uh, in this presentation, uh, we will try to uh, clarify some possible issues that were raised uh, due to a confusion on one of the reviews. So uh, I think uh, the clarification should be just quick and, and easy to, to, to go through. Uh, if we if we can go to the next uh, slide, please. Basically, the first item would be just this clarification and just trying to get into one of the uh, last uh, changes that we are uh, confirming for the next uh, version of the of the draft. And uh, I hope that everyone is happy with the the result. So please, next uh, slide. So regarding the, uh, we had a the same meeting with Karsten and, and Christian regarding the issue from the last injury meeting, because we tried to uh, consider the possibility of using non-confirmable messages, and that raised some some issues. So after the same meeting with them, uh, the idea is just to state that uh, our reliability mechanism will be used uh, using Coapip either by using the confirmable messages uh, in co-op or using an underlying technology that provides uh, the, the reliability in case co-op is used with another transport. And also we are not uh, doing any, uh, concerning ourselves with any assumptions about piggybacking or any, any use cases regarding uh, uh, different uh, communication techniques with uh, maybe a confirmable response or anything. So our idea is that at application layer, we are just assuming that we send a message and the response will arrive to the corresponding application. So it is not our concern what happens 
underneath as we are using co-op under a reliable transport, either provided by co-op or another mechanism. So I think that would clarify the, the confusion from last uh, interim meeting. And uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide. Wait a second, I have a question. I just want yeah. to know, uh, is you say you will be using, is this a must mm -hmm. statement in your document? Yeah, uh, it, it will be uh, provided uh, as uh, at first instance as, as a must. Uh, because uh, the, the protocol should be used uh, with some reliability uh, mechanism under uh, uh, underneath. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, just uh, one clarification: um, what will be the impact on the heap state machine? Or um... yeah, uh, the the impact it is actually uh, negligible because this was actually our first first assumption. So everything from the beginning was done uh, using confirmables. And every, all the, the initial design already followed that, that uh, idea. So uh, we just try to uh, consider the use of non-confirmable messages because of the uh, one, of, uh, one phrase in, in a review that actually added more complexity to the, to the solution. So at this point, actually, we are basically uh, as we were at the beginning. So everything is as it should be. There is no problem with the IP state machine because actually uh, we are assuring that the message is going to arrive as, as expected and, uh, and we are keeping actually the ordering warranty, etc. So everything is as it should be and there are no uh, additional uh, spiky issues there. So we are solving okay. actually pos the possible issues that may have arise if we change that that approach. Okay, so the reason is that there is no change is that you will never be in that situation. Um, in the state the where... Okay, okay. Yes. Um, has anyone any question, any comments uh, regarding this issue? Because that was basically the, I mean, um, um, the most important one currently with the current state of the draft. So that's fine with everyone, I guess. Okay, so I suppose it's fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically just uh, regarding the discovery of the EPOF indicator, uh, at first uh, we say that this, this is actually something that is out of the scope of, of the document, but we may add some discussion about how this could be done. That this is this would be not would not be the the focus of uh, the document. So uh, there are some ideas how to get the IP of the of the authenticator. There the assumption that it's in the border router and other mechanisms. But the idea is to leave the discovery out, out of the scope. So that would finish also the the part of the discovery commented in the review. And uh, next, we are uh, getting uh, following the advice actually of uh, Christian by uh, only using the well known on the first message that goes from the IoT device to the controller. And in the payload of this first uh, message, we are uh, carrying the resource of uh, the IoT device that the co op server, in, in that case, is creating for the uh, next authentication phase so, or the next uh, message. So in this case, uh, we are only using the well-known ones, saving bytes over the, of the link and also uh, reducing uh, possible use cases where the IoT device has this resource always active and may receive messages that uh, are not to be processed. So because the IoT device is always creating a specific resource to process the authentication, we are reducing uh, the cases where, where uh, some entity is sending uh, a message that, that does not belong or does not have to be processed. So that, that basically it's uh, 
the other change that we are we are integrating. And uh, the next uh, slide, please. So basically, after uh, another meeting with with Christian, uh, actually we we decided also to keep the original design of using Oscor for doing the key confirmation. So the idea is that this OSCOR message that arrives from the controller to the IoT device would be treated as an alternate success indication for the IP state machine to uh, release the MSK. Then uh, the only precondition is that we need to create an OSCOR uh, security context that is only missing the key and once uh, this this OSCOR message is treated as an alternate success indication, the MSK is released, the key for the OSCOR security context is derived, is completed, and then we can perform the key confirmation. We are also now sending the recipient and sender ID for the OSCOR security context in the first two messages of the negotiation. In the next slide, we can see how the flow of operation uh, stands in the last uh, version. So in this case, uh, you can see how in the first message, uh, number one, we are not only sending the, the request identity message, but we are also sending the crypto suite uh, negotiation for OSCOR and the sender ID, and the same happens in the message number two, where the if response identity is sent, along with the cipher suite chosen for OSCOR and the recipient ID. Uh, after all this has finished, uh, in the if success, we are sending along also authentication uh, authorization information, sorry, such as the session lifetime, and these two messages are protected with OSCOR. Basically, uh, an OSCOR context is created uh, when the negotiation is, is done, but without the key. That is uh, obtained on the message on message seven that is treated as an alternate success indication. The OSCOR context is then completed and we can send the message eight uh, performing the key confirmation with the controller. This way, we, we will be finishing the the, the complete flow, uh, maintaining the OSCOR uh, exchange as we initially intended. Just a minor detail in the last uh, slide. Uh, we decided to use uh, a, comp a, a, a CBOR structure, uh, like a map, to carry the uh, certain information in the negotiation, such as the crypto switch, uh, cause, uh, if we are using maybe a cause object or any other, uh, sorry, it was, uh, it was, I, it was, it was a mixed spell. It was a seaboard uh, containing additional information or timeout, et cetera. So the idea is to place uh, the information in such a way in the co-op payload to carry the, the additional information that we need and the idea is for this structure following uh, actually Karsten's suggestion to make this structure extensible. Uh, maybe in the future we need to consider additional uh, cipher suites or another uh, negotiation, or we need additional authorization information. So this this uh, structure will will be extensible, and uh, that would be all for for the current version uh, which we are working on. If anyone has a comment, please. Any comment on that? Um, you're on here. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, have you thought about the contents of the crypto suite object and also how to integrity protect that somehow? Yeah, sure. The, the idea basically is we are using uh, from the uh, OSCOR. The, the, the three para, uh, parameters that are needed 
the for for the, the, the establishing the the Oscar security context this would be uh, chosen uh, I think actually pretty similarly to what what uh, you are doing in, in Airspot, but mm, with less information because in this case we we are only using uh, or transmitting information about uh, what uh, concerns to Oscor and the idea to to somehow protect it. Uh, this protection would be done uh, later by binding this information into the key derivation process. So we take the negotiate the, the information that is exchanged in the negotiation. If this information is bound is bound, uh, bounded to the key derivation process. So if there is any alteration or attack, or not the money the middle attack or something with uh, that, that tries to perform a downgrading attack or, or some other alteration of the content, the uh, key confirmation would fail. So that's, okay. that's our way of, of, of providing this, this uh, feature. So that's, that will go into the key derivation of the master, of the master secret. Yes, sure. Okay. So uh, have you looked at the, uh, there is something called Oscar input material in one of the ACE drafts uh, where you, I mean, it's basically, I think it's, it might match what you call crypto suite here. Okay. Uh, so we, it's, we it's, will, the, we'll it's, it's the Oscor profile for ACE and table one is uh, going through, I mean, basically the things that you need to specify. Perfect. For. Perfect. So please. Maybe, we, maybe we, 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 can, we can use that. So thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. So the, the, the idea is that you don't specify uh, another um, IANA table. Yeah, basically the, that's the idea. <laughs> okay. Any any comment on that? I I I think we've been uh, through a number of iterations, so um, it seems the the document is uh, pretty much finalized now. Um, anyone? So I have a question there. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting you, Daniel. What of this is is this key derivation written down already, or is it coming in the next version? Actually, yeah, you, you have it in the in the O3 version. You you okay. have uh, you have the initial uh, or our initial idea because in the O3 version of Coapip, we actually considered this already. The, what, okay. what was missing actually was the the cyber structure to carry over all this information, but but the general idea is already put in there. Okay, I haven't. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um... My understanding of this document is that it's, um, I mean, the next version is going to be ready for um, Shepherd write-up and um, to be moved to Ben's plate. So, I um, when do you think you're going to be able to provide a new a, a new version? So we are actually working right now. Our idea is to um, submit before the the cutoff the, the next version. We will try okay. to have it as, as much polished as possible, uh, but maybe uh, there are some issues that still remain, but I think that we, we will have a, a fairly complete document. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it seems good. Okay. Let's move this way. Um, no other comment on, on, on this draft. When you publish the new version, uh, please um, uh, CC. Um, EMU, the EMU working group. Sure, I will make a note of that. Thank you. So, okay, right. So next on the, on the agenda is the CMP. Um, I'm not sure we do have slides on that, but I see Moit in the, um, in the participant. Moit, do you want to say a few words on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, hello everyone. So, uh, so last week I published the document with all the comments uh, that I have received, and uh, we just want to see if there is any more update on that. Uh, so, from my side, uh, I think I have taken care of all the comments. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I have to. I haven't been through through the document, so um, 
I need to go through it. Uh, as far as I remember, we did have some um, 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 administrative um, requests or um, that might need some time, you know, just asking for uh, uh, specific names or so on. So uh, are this issue being cleared or? So, uh, so, so I think there was one uh, Aina, uh, IAN yeah. uh, name that I think is already registered by the CMP okay. updates, and it's I think it's a temporary registration for one year, uh, which will be permanent after release of the after the draft is uh, converted to RFC. So, and uh, and there is one more uh, registration that is mentioned in the draft. So, I updated the details around that. Okay. Um... Who's the talking, other drive. Please? Who's talking, please? It just says case oh. working group. <laughs> okay, so the person that was talking was um, Moit Sani. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, one thing, um, I, 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 I think the the uh, so now it is Daniel uh, speaking. So um, regarding this INI registration, um, I think the draft is in. Um, Lamps, am I correct? Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember, but is that you, the co the author of uh, that draft as well? Uh, no, that I think is uh, written by Hendrik. And okay. David, yeah. And so my question is, um, there is no race condition between uh, one draft being published and the other, since it's already pre pre registered. Um, but um, if we're using it, we should make sure that, um, I mean, it, there is a temporary re registration as far as I understood, and we just make sure, we need to make sure that um, uh, the INA understand that this registration concerns now two drafts and um, should not remove it um, if the other draft is not moving ahead, for example. It was not a temporary assignment. It was a permanent assignment. Okay. Okay. And, so. uh, I believe you have a normative dependency on the lamp stock. That we yes. need to check. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I have the normative reference, but uh, I, I, I don't think I have a dependency uh, mentioned in the draft. If you have a normative reference, that is the dependency. Okay. I do have that. Okay, so that's um, okay, so that's good. So we are all clear with that draft. Um, I have to go through 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 the comments and to reread that. But I, as I, I haven't seen any major um, thing the first time, I don't think you introduced uh, any additional ones. So I think we are good for this one. Um, I expect the, uh, to move that one. Um, I would say I should have done that last week, but um, I mean, it's going to be in Ben's plate uh, um, in a few weeks. So uh, just one question. So so do I need to email I, I enough uh, that I'll be using the same? Uh, uh, okay, but no. I think as Russ said, it's a permanent uh, registration, so we are okay then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just put the dependency as uh, Russ mentioned. Thank you. Okay. So now let's move to. Uh, so, so I'm trying to find the agenda. I think that's um, Marco. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Great. Uh, yeah, this is an update on the many changes done in, in this key group con document in the last month since the working group was called reviews. So next slide, please. Yeah, there were two reviews, in fact, that were mentioned already. We went through them um, at the past uh, interim uh, from Joran and, and SIGDEM. There were early exchanges with Joran already, and we had more exchanges with SIGDEM this morning, actually, although it's not captured in this slide, but you see that already 
on the list. And if you remember from the previous meeting, the many comments were split into editorial, clarification, and design uh, changes. Uh, let's say I'm done with the editorial things, though, that they keep coming up here and then, but they're easy to fix. Uh, I think I'm almost done with qualifications, and I believe I'm done with design changes, but I, I'll really need to go through them and double check, and it'll be good to have also feedback from the reviewers that really addressed everything. Um, yeah. So um, in that case, um, is that the reviewers uh, 1A and 2A that uh, you're basically waiting for feedbacks or? Well, I'm not 100% done yet, though all the history is on GitHub um, as commits. And um, SIG them already provided some feedback this morning saying that, well, the <laughs> way I plan to address things uh, look good to her. Uh, but it's another thing to look at the text and see mm, that okay. the result is good. <laughs> OK, um, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, just trying to give a, a survey of what I've done and skipping the editorial things, of course. Um, selective qualifications were, were many already. SIG then wanted to have already an early definition of group and what we really mean with that, which is a, a security group and, and the encoding of, of some messages that doesn't really deviate from ACE um, anyway. Um, Joran had several comments on, on the parts about uh, posting or less ambiguously transferring the token to uh, the KDC and the parameters involved. And that should be also clearer now. And SIGDAM had many comments on the um, joining process as such and details of its messages, I think especially on the first and last um, sub bullet point here. So uh, approaches for early discovery of the group uh, for a joining client and concrete examples of what we can transport into this uh, management key material that, that uh, starts making sense only if you consider uh, more advanced group wrecking schemes. So this should also be uh, addressed now, but again, th these are just the clarifications. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, right, this may seem like editorial changes, but it's much more than that because it was really about restructuring uh, the document uh, heavily. Uh, these kind of things, I, I think, both uh, Sigdem and Joram uh, wanted, and the first one uh, essentially resulted in, in a new table of content, which I believe is much better and, and linear uh, to follow now. So it overviews the interface and the operations that the KDC provides. And then it goes one by one through um, each resource at the KDC providing a certain functionality. It, it describes the handlers for those resources um, and then an example for each of those in, in a very linear and predictable way. And also Sigdem noticed that there was a lot of redundant text about error handling that was common to all or most of the handlers that was repeated over and over. So I actually managed to find what was really common and put that on top on a dedicated section about error handling. And a few things specialized on very particular handlers uh, were only left there. And many more other stuff that I don't want to uh, bore you about today. Next slide, please. So th those, were, those were the clarifications. There were uh, a, a bit bigger design changes here, uh, also discussed in the reviews. And these ones are basically related to enabling uh, more efficient group routine schemes rather than basic point-to-point uh, -point approaches, but rather relying, relying on uh, one-to-many delivery of routine messages, for example, over multicast. And, and we realized this required to introduce um, to start a, a number of parameters. Uh, those working messages are supposed to be signed uh, by the KDC to ensure source authentication, which brings in um, the, the public key of the KDC as well to be provided to the joining nodes. This is something that for different reasons we were doing uh, in the key group Amoscore document. So something could be imported from there and, and I imported here, meaning the first set of parameters you see on top was just about transferring them here and adapting that other document to, to use them as defined here already. And then I had to define some brand new parameter here, as we discussed at the interim last month, uh, so that uh, at joining time, the KDC can tell the joining node the, the exact working scheme used in the group 
and if nothing is said, we go for the basic approach uh, as default. And, and possibly a URI, uh, well, with the authority component mentioning a multicast address where uh, these recking messages of these advanced recking schemes can uh, possibly uh, be sent. And that required a new IANA registry and a bit more clarification on the default behavior. And finally, also imported uh, from Key Group of Moscow and now defined here uh, a new resource at the KDC that the group members, once they are group members, can query uh, to get the public key uh, of the KDC. So this should be all the missing uh, building blocks that we didn't have yet to enable uh, a highly scalable uh, group routine based, for instance, of a multicast, but the scheme itself is not something to be defined here. We, we just give the building blocks to do that here. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. Um, right. I think these points uh, all came from Yoran and maybe a part of this from Sigdem uh, as well. Um, there are a lot of parameters, of course, uh, defined in this document. And well, the KDC itself is supposed to understand all of them, of course, but now the parameters are uh, categorized as uh, to be, I mean, as must, should, or may uh, understood uh, by, by the group members. And a profile of this document can possibly upgrade this kind of requirements. So making a, a may parameter, a, a should parameter, or a should parameter can become a must parameter and so on. So profiles can, can make these things uh, stricter than they are here. Um, some parameters defined here instead are just conditional to particular um, situations to happen or, or conditions to be verified. And then it's a separate requirement for profiles to, to say the last word. And, and based on those conditions that can be profile specific, um, take a final decision and say, okay, in this profile, that parameter then is a must uh, parameter. And of course, if a profile defines a brand new parameter of its own, that parameter has to be categorized according to the same um, taxonomy. Uh, there are also now better clarifications on enhanced error responses that are optional to use anyway, and they can uh, give more information on the error that happened with uh, intervalue for the actual error, uh, more and more optionally. Uh, a textual error description. So since this is using uh, a content format that we have for all messages anyway, and it's aligned with uh, other enhanced error messages in ACE, it's a cheap way to give a better hint to devices, especially the, the error integer. But we have also clarified that uh, there's really no use for the textual error description if no human intervention is expected and the KDC is supposed to log any uh, error event uh, anyway. And then there's also a separate categorization of what operations the um, KDC uh, provides. So the KDC itself is supposed to really uh, support everything unless a profile says otherwise, because something is really not needed at all. Uh, but for, for the device, for the group members, I split these operations into uh, primary, I call them, so really, to be minimally supported and, and secondary, uh, to be additionally supported uh, when, when, when it is not strictly needed, maybe because of the roles that the device wants to have um, in the group. And new functionalities introduced by profile have to be categorized according to the same way of thinking. Uh, next slide, please. And this should be the last point on the design changes. And it's probably the biggest one. And we really, really need a good re-review of this content, uh, which is now a new section six of about seven pages. Uh, it was noted that all the content about the group wrecking was uh, scattered uh, here and there in the draft. So the first thing was collecting it um, in a single draft, and then it had to take into account related comments, some of which I mentioned um, in the previous slides. Uh, so the section starts giving an overview of uh, what the group wrecking actually is, how it is supposed to work and to achieve uh, in general. And following a suggestion uh, from your own wrecking messages performed upon the joining of new group members can also take the opportunity to provide the public keys of those new group members. So sparing separate traffic uh, later on uh, as an optimization, it's of course optional uh, to do. 
And then the section continues giving more detail on what is the basic point-to-point -point working approach, which is supposed to be uh, really supported minimally by the KEC to use, uh, and some practical recommendations and guidelines on, on variations of it, for instance, based on, on co-op observed. But then it continues opening for uh, more efficient approaches uh, that can be defined uh, somewhere else, but still it gives guidelines here. So you can rely on efficient delivery of wrecking messages, uh, for instance, over multicast or through a pub sub architecture. Uh, regardless the exact way you used to deliver these messages, uh, it also gives give, uh, hints and very high level examples uh, on how that can work and how you may use COSI uh, to protect those working messages at the application level with the dedicated um, administrative uh, key material. But the details are very specific to the exact working scheme you use, like the, the real algorithm used and the message format and content. So I would expect totally different documents to take this as a starting point and to make a profiling of a group working scheme in this context and possibly even taking into account application profiles of this document. And this is also uh, all explained in that section. I, I think, again, it's really, really important to do a re-review uh, of this content now because it's a lot and it, it's mostly new. So um, are you saying that um, this um, section six is uh, mature enough for review or are you still working on that? Uh, I finished today. I think it, it is it is readable and it's in the editor's copy. All I've presented so far uh, is in the editor copy. So if anyone wants to gain time, they can have an early look already. Yes. Okay. So um, well, I, I I think given the, um, I mean the, the the people that reviewed it are um, basically uh, Sigdem and uh, Guren. So um, I'm wondering if if it's a uh, Feasible for uh, that you you see you see with them uh, um, um, if they can uh, have a look at it before you publish, so that we we can speed up a little bit uh, um, and and uh, when it's published uh, we at least have um, I mean uh, we already had the reviews from the the two reviewers. <laughs> right, uh, I think Yoram wants to say something. <laughs> Yeah, I can have a look at section six. That's that's why if you wanted me to read the editor's copy, I could do that. I was planning to read the next version otherwise. Okay, so maybe you can, uh, Marco, you can publish the the next version next week. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able before the cutoff because there are a few things left, and maybe it's just streaming. But I still hope to be able to read it from top to bottom. Because mm. <laughs> I okay. haven't yet, and. Uh, about Siglem, uh, I suppose she's pretty busy with her own documents uh, and other things. So probably she cannot review before the next version is published anyway. Uh, but yeah, as yeah, she yeah. knows about all these updates, if, if you check the, the mailing list and the exchange we had this morning. No, no, no. I, I, I see. Um, um, I, I, I think uh, I see that everyone is aligned, but um, I would like to, to compress this. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I understand. To try to compress that, but um, so feel free to ping them um, and uh, ask them if it's possible, and then we can move that on. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, uh, shall we, new next, requirements. Yeah. This. Uh, this is just. Um, this is just the list. Basically, all the changes I mentioned before resulted in a lot of new requirements. Uh, I think REC2 is unrelated uh, to, to what I showed. It was just missing uh, all the time, but, but all the other ones were related to these changes. And yeah, I had to define them and I have to renumber everything. And this is the number, the numbering today. Of course, it can change again, but at least it's consistent. Uh, <laughs> It, yeah, it, it, it's caring. And by the way, I split the appendix with the requirement now into two clear subsections to have uh, first the mandatory to address requirements uh, and then as a separate subsection, the optional ones, just for, for the sake of reading. Um, yeah, uh, I think I've 
covered uh, all points from the reviews as far as I can tell, but I, I really have to double check and I'm still hoping I can read from top to bottom. I, I'll probably have to harmonize a lot of terminology here and there in Polish. There are still a few clarifications to give for points that were raised um, in, in the July meeting about clarifying even better the, the overall goal uh, of this document is scope and what covers basically in the abstract and, and the introduction and be very explicit about what we assume about the KDC to be a very trusted node uh, and, and about the secure interactions with it. Uh, but all I presented so far is already um, in the editor's copy and yeah, I, I'll keep working to deliver the best I can uh, for the cattle. Um, in parallel, of course, I'm working on Kigruka Moscow, uh, by the way, since it's the next item in the agenda, but this line is the only thing I have to say. It was mostly about, um, as I said before, moving content out of it to bring it into this document and to reflect in Kigru Komoskor uh, things as they changed here instead. Okay. Um, can you um, also say a few words about um, the Kigru um, um I, I mean, um, it is also uh, related to some work uh, being done in core. So, I mean, uh, are, are we going to something more stabilized for that document or uh, do we envision some changes? Um, uh, as to the relation it has with the document in core, Kigru Kamoskor was stable already um, in July. Yeah. Actually. So uh, I, it is still stable in that respect. Uh, it, it is still uh, being updated mostly because of what is happening in this document now. Okay. Uh, so still, still bearing a careful proofreading and, and so on and so forth. Uh, that document is pretty stable too. Okay, and um, uh, when do we expect the core to move that document? Um, because I, my guess is that those two documents should be published together. Well, Maybe I'm wrong. Not necessarily. The the document in ACE really depends from the document in core. The other way around, I think there is still a normative re reference involved, technically, uh, but it, it is not as a strong link. Uh, the documenting core, I believe, can go into a second working group last call, uh, the November. Uh, okay. okay. And uh, the key group com Oscar document here instead has still to enter uh, working group last call uh, at all. Oh, the, you mean the, the key group come OS core? Yes, we have it's never not... had. Okay. Uh, no. But when, um, when um, um, I mean, is it in, um, I mean, uh, it's not yet, but uh, is it going to happen in one or two weeks or um, is it two or three I years? Hope at, uh, I hope that at the cutoff, uh, I submit more documents, uh, updated, okay. stable, and aligned with one another. So if, if there are no bad surprises, probably key group common score can be considered for working group last call around after the November meeting. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah. so I mean the the timeline is uh, matching for the two, um, um, which is I, I think it's a uh, it's better. Yeah. Okay. So so that's good. I have a comment here yeah, for, sure. for Marco. So thank you very much, Marco, for doing all this work. Uh, very painful, like I understand. <laughs> um, so the purpose of all these comments was to to clarify some of the mandatory parts of the specification, and also, at least for for me, make it easier to to read and and uh, well, in terms of how things are introduced. But what is your feeling now after having done this? Is, was it worth the exercise? Or did, did we get a better document out of it? Or, or... I really think so. It, it, reads, it reads much better now. So I'm very grateful for the comments. And okay. Reviews. okay. You sounded very um, troubled. So I just wanted to check that. Well, it, it wasn't easy. It was really a lot of work, but it was worth it, I think. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. So. That's pretty good. I, I don't think we, I, I mean, um, my guess is that uh, um, at the next ITF, uh, we will still have uh, two, two of those documents that um, will not be moved to the ISG. I'm pretty confident that the CMP one 
uh, will be moved. Um, so that's uh, how I see the thing. But um, um, what I would like is um, that we we do not. I mean, this ITF we may. I, I would. I, what I would expect is that during this ITF we say, yeah, we are ready with those two documents that we haven't um, um, uh, 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 finalized yet. But um, I, what I really, really, really don't want to do is to have a next ITF, uh, which is um, uh, ITF 114, uh, discussing again uh, about those documents. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I think we are on good track to to achieve uh, that. By the end of the year, I would like those documents to be sent uh, to Ben. Um, I think it's realistic. Yeah, that's my feeling as well. Um, maybe the, I mean, uh, can the the, the co-op um, agree on that? Hopefully, uh, we we can have a finalized document that maybe just has some editing issues or minor issues to take care of. But I think that. Design-wise, it should be pretty much finalized. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I think that's pretty good. That um, um, I mean, I'm pretty happy about the progress we're making. Um, so, I received an email uh, from Sigdem this morning. Um, it's about the pub sub. Um, so she is um, updating it. Uh, so uh, Sigdem can't attend this meeting because uh, she's um, giving some lectures. Um, and so she's uh, reviewing, um, so, so she received some comments from Marco. She's updating the document. She needs to clarify some of the things with Francesca. Um, and, um, but that's um, hopefully by the end of the month, uh, we should have um, uh, something. So um, I suspect that we will, um, reach also i mean the document i hope this document will be ready by the end of the year for um working group last call um and the mqq 2 ls uh, is still in discussion with ben so um i mean it's um uh, it's moving on so we are pretty well on track um yeah i think we we're progressing well um as far as I see, is that the, the time frame before I received some updates for the meeting, and the meeting is now uh, it's it's now almost live. <laughs> um, but that's uh, so I, I think it's important that we keep those um, interim meetings to, um, to to make some progress and um, and um, yeah. So basically, I'd like to thank you all for the effort you're doing. I'm wondering, uh, Logan, do you have anything to add or? Uh, that's good for me on my side. Just I would request participants to make sure that they're filling the blue sheet. Uh, Marco here. I have an administrative comment on the GM admin <laughs> document, uh, actually, on which I plan to have very small updates, by the way, because I have to prioritize Bigrocom. Uh, the comment is about the GitHub repo. Uh, for the document, uh, there must be some misconfiguration because the editor's copy is not really built. Uh, I'm posting the link to the uh, main repo here. So anything else uh, work in the repo, the, the branches, the the building and everything, but uh, the, the core building of the editor's copy uh, doesn't work. And I don't think I have the privileges to, to, to change any of this. So just in case the chairs can can possibly fix that. It's not urgent, but uh... so um, let me check. I saw um, Andrik asking me to to become a um, to become an editor or an uh, administrator. Um, I was a little bit surprised, but um... well, the the chairs and the responsible AD should be uh, administrator of the repo, the working group. Yeah, so I, I think that is, but for some reason I cannot connect to this uh, GitHub thing. Um, 
um, copy link, maybe uh, something with WebEx. Yeah, sure. Well, so what exactly do you want me to do? Um, somehow fix the configuration of this repo and if required, reinstall the, um, the environment from Martin Thompson, basically, that, that builds the editor's copy. Because if you scroll down and click on editor's copy. So do you see my screen here? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. If you click on the bot, yeah, on the left on editor's copy, uh, it's a broken link. Okay. So there's something broken in this repo configuration because the other repos work. Uh, I, I use some of them, so it, it must be something exactly about this. And again, I, I don't think I have the privileges to fix any of this or reinstall uh, Martin's uh, environment. I don't know what the exact problem is. I just report the effect. Okay, so I we we may have a look at it, but I cannot promise it's going to be fixed. Uh... For the next idea. <laughs> no, 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 no rush. Not needed by then, absolutely. It, it's going to become problematic later on if reviewers want to check the editor's copy or I have to give a link to it and, and that doesn't work. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I can leave I with that so far. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I, I might check with, um, I might check that uh, what is going on, but. Um, um, it, it, it is not very high in my priorities for now. <laughs> I understand. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, but thank you for mentioning that. Um, any other comment? No. So I think we we can adjourn the meeting for now. And thank you everyone for. Um, thank you, Russ, for taking the notes. Okay. And thank you'll you. find them in uh, Code EMD. Okay, thank you. Very much for us. And thank you everyone for attending that meeting. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Daniel, please. Ouais. And don't forget to um, stop the recording as well. Ouais, ouais, je vais faire ça. Attends, j'ai perdu les commandes. Voilà, record. Stop.